Hi, everybody. Okay, so everybody should be in front of their computers. So the best thing we can do is just start throwing me the chats. I've got a little plan for the, the time that we're gonna spend together. But I also wanna make sure that um, you guys are comfortable uh, interacting. So I'm gonna put up all the participants and I can bring you on the screen or we can just do it uh, where I read the questions and that kind of stuff. And if you have any feedback for me based on how things are feeling and that I'm going at the right pace or whatever, I'll be watching the chat box. It's raining in Boulder today, which is weird. Did everybody get a good workout this morning? Throw it in the chat box for me. Let's see how fast that goes. Twenty-five miles on the bike. Good job, Sarah. What are you gonna do later, Mark? Or is Friday kind of a down day? Ooh, I swim in a quarry. Sonia, where do you live? Nice, Kentucky. <laughs> Brit, that, uh, that aura ring, listen to it. Listen to it. And then tomorrow you're gonna crush it. And then just really focus on hydration as well. So when you get a note, whether it's from your whoop band or from your aura ring or whatever modality of recovery tool you're using for measurement, um, focus on nutrition, focus on health. Yeah, really hammer hydration today and you should feel really good tomorrow. So just remember when your watch or your aura ring is telling you that you need to recover, then usually it's, it's detecting a higher stress load. And so we can usually um, do better with um, just overall health by preparing our body um, just to function better. And so that's going to be um, blood volume. It helps with everything. So hydrate. Big time. Had myself in the giant screen. I, I don't think I really like it that way. Good morning, hi. It's always afternoon when I say good morning to you too. I know work week. I hate when work gets in the way of my training. It's been a little bit crazy. So we're gonna just keep letting people, good morning, Diana. We're gonna keep letting people um, show up here. Um, no, Michelle, this will be on demand. So everything we do, if you guys need to blow out of here or whatever, uh, drop me a question if there's a specific question, but you know you can always throw me questions via email as well. So I'm gonna leave this. We are recording this session. It'll be there for on demand. But if you have really specific questions, um, I'm, a, I'm getting more, e more and more emails and that's exciting for me, but it just means it takes me sometimes just a little bit longer um, to respond. 
So we're at 1101 and I'm going to start my jam here at about 1105. And so that means that I'm going to go through a little bit of a program, a little bit of a story, and that probably will elicit questions. And so we're going to do that just consistently using the chat box. The other thing we can do too, guys, if you go down to the bottom, you sh and and you look and you see that Q and A, you might. Um, I'll watch that box. So if I see people using the Q and A, it might be a little cleaner and a little easier way to make sure that I'm addressing all of the questions that come my way. There's one. Yeah, this that's probably better. So you guys, I think. I can answer this live or I can type an answer, which means it'll give me a chance to answer your questions later if I don't deal with it. But I will probably get in my little um, initial presentation, I'll probably get a lot of questions answered. But if you have something really specific, go to that Q&A and just go ahead and type in the question. Um, Cause I want to handle, I am learning the technology for sure. Um, I'm way more comfortable with the science and the training than I am with the technology, but I can kind of give you why everything might have been a little confusing on the journey um, as well. So um, just gonna give it a couple more minutes. And if there's anything that I can't answer, because I'm pretty good at knowing what I know and knowing what I don't know, um, I can do a little research and get back to you as well on that. So, take a quick look here. Hopefully we'll have some new folks too. Um, I don't, most of you guys that are here, hi Tracy Yates, I haven't seen you in a while. And Trace, we are starting to do our Thursday mornings. The, the Tuesdays now is Thursday over at Rally. So maybe you will be able to join us uh, next week. That's been a, a really nice little group that we have going. So we're doing that outside, um, socially distance as best as well. I hope I'm saying your name right, but Reiko, Reiko, I definitely am going to deal with your questions. You are awesome for giving them to me in, a day in, a, in advance. So we'll get to those. And I'll probably type, type my answer as well as answer live. Oh, nice. Hi, Bruce. Perfect. Reiko, like Seiko. Got it. Perfect. Thank you for that. Okay. Let's roll. Okay, so a lot of you guys have been spending time with me doing Zoom workouts. Uh, you see me on the on demand um, because that's my my new my new product. Um, my name is Aaron Carson. I've been a strength coach since 1989, um, quite a while. So I got my first certified strength and conditioning specialist credential at the University of Colorado, where I played uh, basketball in Division One, And then I went over to Europe and played basketball for a year, came back, went to graduate school at Tulane University, and where I was an assistant basketball coach. And when you're a young assistant basketball coach, they typically will also give you the strength and conditioning. And that's where I really started finding my love of performance <clears throat> and learning to, to just become that performance-based strength coach, because as much as there's a lot of people who do what I do, whose fo sole focus is how much weight can you lift, I don't see that as a pure dictator of great outcomes of performance. And I think even through some of the mentors that I have sought out, um, Mike Boyle is a fabulous strength coach in Boston. He is one of the, um, strength coaches for the U.S. women's hockey team. Um, he's just a super, super smart guy. And he was one of my first uh, guys that I started following. So his name is Mike Boyle. He is just a super smart guy. Um, Michelle Dal Dalcourt invented the Viper. He's a Canadian guy. I'm Canadian. So, of course, I think he's really, really smart. 
and, uh, and just so helpful for me. And that's why we bring the Viper tools in. Mark Verstegen, um, Mark Verstegen has a company called Exos. Um, the reason, and he used to do a company called Athlete Performance. The reason I love Mark Verstegen so much is because he kind of coined a phrase that I believe in wholeheartedly, which is simple things done savagely well. So I wish I had said that first, but I didn't. And um, Mark, if, if you're out there watching, um, just know that I think that's the most brilliant thing ever. I think with strength and conditioning, people wish it was way more complicated than it, than it is. And I think my overall message is to just keep things simple for the body because we want to be performance. We want to run fast. We want to hike well. We want to ski well. We want to play excellent golf. We want to be amazing triathletes. Um, those are the things where we want to take up the, the neural load and the brain space. So performance versus strength training exclusively is, is really where I think I started to become um, sought out with people who wanted to live amazing lives and do things uh, in a really, really fun way. So mostly in sport. So everything that we do in the strength world and in the strength, um, strength and conditioning space is all geared towards excellent performance to do the things that you love to do. So I started um, at Rally Sport almost 30 years ago. I've been really blessed as a, a fitness professional to, to be able to kind of guide my own uh, professional journey. And about 10 years ago, I made a really great friend in uh, Timothy O'Donnell. And a lot of you guys might know Tio. Um, he just uh, set an amazing American record in Kona in the Ironman Triathlon uh, last year. Um, and it, we've been together for eight years. This is our, I think this is our eighth season together in 2020. So um, I also coach his wife. You might have heard of her, Miranda Carfrey. Um, and I've just been with T.O. and Rennie for, for a long time. So they're, they're kind of my foundational, uh, the proof is in the pudding because through, these, through this time, um, not only have they continued to get better, they have gotten older and we have also been through having a baby um, and we have just stayed healthy. I mean, they're exceptional A++ athletes. And so, you know, they didn't, they didn't come with a lot of big problems when I first got them. But as we know, the rigors of training, when you're looking to, to be the best in the world, um, can really tear you down a little bit. So um, I have a whole pro team that in the coming weeks you'll be able to see who those athletes are, if it matters. Um, I think the beauty of the pros for most of us who are age groupers is that they just tell us a story and we're able to watch um, in real time their performances play out. And so that's why I like the pros, but, but my passion is all about helping everyone. So I have athletes and clients from every age category every socioeconomic group, um, even though I live in Boulder, I mean, most of the people that I work with just have a really strong desire to be the best that they can be. So four years ago is when my first app uh, was created. And that app is the EC Fit Boulder app. Now, if you can see, that's the black one, this one right here. And it's in the app store the EC Fit Boulder app. That app is still very, very functional, very relevant. Um, I want to use that app, the black app, for all my custom programs. I'm gonna use that app for all of the programs that have existed and been created over the years. Um, Rini has a three-phase Ironman program in there with 18 different workouts. Uh, T.O. has an Ironman Phase 1 program that Phase 2 is being launched here in the next few weeks. The beauty of that app is that it just lines up the workouts. Um, and I suggest you just download it because there's all kinds of free stuff on it. And you cannot do any in-app purchases with this app. 
So all this app will do is once you tap on it, you see a picture of Rini, you sign in, and you're gonna get a list of video demonstrated workouts. And they are, there's just always gonna be a place for that app. The weakness of that app is that you don't get any audio. So it's all video. There are tracking sheets now so that you can download a PDF and just track your weights to make sure that you are progressing little by little. And it also gives us a little bit of information if we start to overdo it. So the tracking is all done manually, um, just writing in your weights and telling us a story and keeping records. Um, the weakness of that app is you don't get any cueing, you don't get any coaching. And so we went to the on-demand platform specifically so that you could get a little bit more teaching, a little bit more learning, and a little bit more cueing. And so what the feedback that I've gotten is the people who have enjoyed the, uh, the programs app, once they started using the on-demand, they were like, oh, my foot position matters. My breath matters. My posture matters. My head position matters. And they're starting to just dial in their form and their body position in such a better way. And so most of what they're doing in the programs app is just becoming better. And they're going back and redoing programs over and over and over again. And programs are a series of usually five to 10 different workouts. So we have the programs app and we have the on demand and we kind of have advantages to both of them. Um, and, and I want you to basically have both. So at the end of this workout, I'm going to give you, or at the end of, the, end of this webinar, um, we're going to give you a little opportunity to have a program in addition to your on-demand uh, experience as well. So shifting gears, and this is to Reiko's question, okay? In the on-demand app, we have launch and we have climb, two different things, launch and climb. Every workout, every exercise has a certain level of neural demand. How much do I have to think to do this workout? For performance-based athletes, for busy people, who have jobs and families and sport, as well as if you're a professional athlete and your coach is just breaking you down, it's important that you don't choose a climb workout when you are exhausted. It's just too much. It's, it's gonna put you into overload. So I developed launch workouts for those days. They're less neural demand, less physical demand versus a climb workout, which is gonna challenge you in both ways. Neurologically, your brain is gonna have to function at a higher level and your musculature is gonna be asked to uptick. uptick. So that's launch versus climb. So at the beginning of the on-demand workouts, I'll be like, hey guys, let's do a launch workout today. Immediately, you should have a response that is just like, okay, I can do this because it's launch. You're going to find that in the coming weeks and months, I'm going to be adding more climb workouts. And I'll be like, okay, guys, today is a climb day. We're going to, we're going to work hard. I'm going to ask you to dig a little bit deeper. So launch versus climb on days that you're just a little bit tired, you can just go into the app and use the search function and look for launch workouts. Once you've been through a collection or two, and I'm going to come back to that in just a second, then you can kind of randomly pick things. Um, but I want you to go through some collections. Okay, so that's launch versus climb. The next differentiation is going to be through from lift and strength. Lift, L-I-F-T, strength. Spell it. The bottom line with those is a lift workout is lighter loads. 
we use lighter loads in um, mobility training in launch sessions primarily to stimulate muscle fiber to facilitate better movement so when we talk about mobility if i ask you to tip at the hip so let's say we're doing this and we're just going to tip at the hip and then come back up tip at the hip if i just put some fives or 10 pound dumbbells or kettlebells in your hands more muscles are going to turn on more muscles are going to activate to make that happen on one direction and to bring it back out of there so we're looking for activation and facilitation of great movement using lighter loads that's what a lift workout is and those of us that want to get better so i really like being a good athlete but more than anything even though i'm over 50 i still want to get better so the bottom line is if i choose to load up a bunch of weight to get stronger it could actually make me slower because my rate of force production as well as um, my movement quality might go down because I have overloaded a system that isn't ready to be loaded in that way. So performance athletes for me are way more fun. Don't worry, Kirsten, I'll make sure there's stuff added in there. Some of it might have expired. So I will uh, make sure that the EC Fit app's loaded up. But the, um, the bottom line is we wanna facilitate improvement in athletic performance. So lift, lighter weights to facilitate better movement. Strength, on the other hand, is when I'm gonna start adding more and more load. Um, and we're gonna ask you to just overload your system a little bit so you do get that muscular response of either greater muscle size or great the ability to to um uh, take on more tension and and more uh tissue tension so strength workouts will be heavier lift workouts will be lighter um classes versus workouts big difference on here and i didn't really go into the on demand thinking i was going to have a lot of these classes but when covid came we started finding Zoom and I just didn't have any athletes around because they were all on lockdown. So I just started leading these classes, just do as I do, follow me. And so they became really popular. So classes are follow me. Workouts are, I'm gonna coach you. So when you look at class launch uh, episode one, that's going to follow me. I'm going to lead that class and we're going to do it at my pace, nice rhythm. And we've been enjoying those together. Once you start getting into the workouts, um, you're basically going to see me coaching my athletes. So I've got Jeannie Seymour, Justin Metzler, uh, Andre Lopez, uh, Rachel Olson, um, all as the athlete and I'm coaching and cueing them through the workouts. So build one and build two collections, they, that's where you see me coaching and that's where you're going to learn a lot more. So the other thing that's been kind of fun about the classes, I've added Pilates. Um, I've got four Pilates classes. I think I've only launched two of them as a release right now. We've also got two yoga classes. We'll be adding more yoga if they become popular. And then I just added two dance classes. And I want, yes, the app is available in all the countries. Um, and if you have any trouble with that, let me know. But um, the dance class, guys, when we talk about movement and rhythm and timing, and trust me, I'm a horrible dancer. But I gave you two dance classes, um, and I've given you two kind of aerobics classes that are coming, because I want you to some days not think about being a triathlete or a cyclist or a runner. I want you to think about moving in a way that you're not necessarily comfortable moving. So you're gonna see dance classes, you're gonna see a couple of cardio classes. I won't do much of those, but I want you to be, be free and open your mind because your body's really capable of doing lots of, lots of different things. Um, the third category of classes that I'm super stoked about, obviously, is I love foundation training. 
Um, foundation training is my way of delivering a little bit of a parasympathetic um, experience for the athletes. So foundation training is, is about bringing your nervous system down, down regulating your nervous system, and also adding tension into a system um, in a different way than yoga. I'm definitely not a yoga um, teacher, but I love the foundation training. It has really kept my athletes super healthy, allowed me to want, because once they're healthy and once you're healthy, we want to add a lot of external load, whether it be through interval training, um, through specific strength exercises like goblet squats and front squats and, and hex, hex bar deadlifts and stuff like that. But you've just got to be super healthy. You've got to have great posture and you've got to have really good rhythm and timing. Um, so let me take on a couple questions. I'm just going to go through this Q&A. So Janet Dixon, um, I don't, can you guys see, somebody answer me this in the chat. Um, can you guys see the questions on, the, on your board? No. Okay. So let me read the question. Uh, if we want to plan out a month longer of work, workouts via on demand, what order and frequency of workouts per week? The answer is always it depends, but I'm going to be as specific as I can. Um, Janet, if you are handling your hours per week of running, cycling, swimming, or whatever you're training for, then my first suggestion will be to add two strength, two lift workouts or two launch workouts for the first three to four weeks. If you can handle that and you can recover from that, then I would add another half workout. So sometimes I've had, people have said, how many workouts per week should I do in strength? And I'll say two and a half. So if I have given you 10 exercises in a program, or if I have given you most of the stuff on demand is 20 to 35 minutes. So you can do a whole on demand launch workout um, and call it a half and that'll work perfectly. But I want you to start with two per week. So the two days that I'd like to see those strength workouts, if possible, is to have them be either before or after um, your interval run day or your interval ride day. So two workouts a week to start. Don't get carried away and add a bunch more than that just because you have a new app. Um, we don't want to do that. I just want two a week and then we can talk a little bit. And I've been pretty accessible for most people who have had specific questions. And then I ask how old you are. Um, I've asked some people to send me a photo of themselves so I can see what kind of body type they have. Um, so I just try to do, make it as, as specific and personal as I can. Okay. So there's hopefully Janet that answers, but you know how to get a hold of me if, if I didn't. Okay. Next one. Um, okay. So uh, Reiko, I talked about launch, climb. Tutorials are just me teaching. Um, so go ahead and, and just watch me teach. I think I'm even wearing this shirt when I did those. Um, tissue release and mobility. Those are things that if you're just chilling at the end of the night um, and you just want to do a little bit of EC fit, you want to do something that you don't have to think too much and you want me to guide you, then jump into a tissue release and mobility workout. In this last release, just this week, I added um, some uh, glute activators. And I really suggest under the category of movement prep, I really suggest you look for those glute activators and hip openers um, because that will really, really help um, get you into position to have a good, good workout. For the newbies and when you first get on on demand, so if you're in trial or you're just checking things out, go to the getting started collection. Those are in red on the app. Collections are my suggestion for two weeks of engagement on the on demand app. Build one and build two are actually three weeks. And so I'm gonna ask you to do specific things on specific days. The collections are really cool. So you want to do getting started first. It'll help you learn to navigate the app, find the classes, 
get really good at foundation training because they start foundation training starts getting integrated into all of the sessions, the classes, all of the above. Um, I would go through getting started first, go to build one, go to build two. It's kind of listed in my suggested uh, guide, but I've also had some people kind of come at me with they want more strength early in their relationship with EC Fit. So then I've gotten them to get a program to engage within the on-demand experience. And that's kind of a, a new thing that we're starting to see and feel is how people navigate both apps together. So I would, if you feel good at the end of build one, I would carry on to build two. And if you feel great at the end of build two, I would actually go back and do build one again. Strength and conditioning is a, is a world of repetition. And once your body goes through it once, if it felt good, guys, chances are the second time through, it's going to feel even better. So don't be afraid. Like, don't just tick the box and say, I don't need to do this anymore. Um, definitely keep moving and move back and then go forward again. And if you're just lost and you need help, email me. Okay. All right, Bruce, I'm a two sport athlete cycling and running. How would you best integrate your workouts with long efforts required for each sports training cycle? Bruce, I'm going to ask you a quick question and you're going to just answer me in the chat. Um, or I, I, I'm going to do that by decade. You know, for me, it seems like most of my athletes that are coming to me, uh, like in this group here, most of us are over 40. So Bruce, are you under 40 or over 40? Answer me that in the, you're 53. Okay, perfect. So my answer to you, Bruce, and to all of us older athletes, long efforts are trashing your hormonal profile. We need to do long efforts. For some reason, we always have been in this journey of doing them every seven days because we usually will do our long workouts on Saturday or Sunday. Once we're over 50, you, if you can handle those and recover from them and you're still getting that high end work, maybe on your Tuesday or Wednesday interval day, I would like to see you do a program, an EC Fit program that focuses on heavy loading uh, on your Tuesday or Wednesday so that you're balancing those long efforts and you're getting a little bit of a testosterone kick and men and women will get a testosterone kick from heavy weights. So if you're over 40, you might not need the heavy weights as much of us as us over 50. But if you haven't got a bunch of experience lifting weights, then I'm gonna probably put you in through a little bit of a class progression so that you get good cueing from me, you get really good form, and it might take us a few weeks to get you into a heavy lifting program. Over 60, exactly the same answer as over 50. We wanna get you under heavy load. So just so you know, that's gonna be really important, heavy loads. So Bruce, at least Tuesday or Wednesday, midweek, I would like to see you doing a 30 to 40 minute heavy lifting. And that might mean you only have three heavy lifts, but it, we got to spend a little bit of time um, undoing uh, some of the tightness that comes from cycling and running. And hopefully that answered your question. I've discovered imbalances between my left compared to my right hip. Uh, Erica, the most important thing, and I love Linda, um, Rowan, uh, my biggest thing is just to keep doing the class workouts, nothing too heavy, so that we're just keep working on our single leg work. And if it's more specific than that, like if we're starting to really notice a difference um, in right side and left side rotation, then we probably should do an individual session just so I can get my eyes on you. Um, but you know, the, the thing is, guys, our right side and left side isn't always supposed to be the same. So I've got a, an athlete in San Francisco and his upper body looks a little bit like this. I don't know if you can see my hand. See how one arm is down at the side and my other arm's in front. He was a tennis player. <laughs> so his whole high school um, 
life, he played tennis. And I've seen the same thing with throwing athletes. Um, they're going to be a lot shorter on the right side, but later in life they take up cycling. But we want to just keep opening, opening up that up. I wish I knew, uh, Melanie, I don't know how to make the participant Q&A visible to the attendees. Does anyone know how to do that? Because I'll, I'll do it. I'll look under more here. No, it's not there. If anybody knows how to do it, just send me, some, send me a, a chat because I'll fix that. Oh, Heinz says I can see the questions. So, Melanie, I, d I don't know how to do that. Um, but if anybody else does, after you answer, they appear. Okay. So there you go. So then they start coming up. Okay, Lou, I'm excited to sign up for on demand, uh, billings through iTunes. Uh, if you do want to do the on demand app, it, you can do it through iTunes. It's easier and better for me. If you do it through the website, ecfitstrength.com. So uh yeah you're probably lewis you're gonna be probably be just fine i will double check your registration and thank you for joining us um but just so you know uh hopefully you guys you can do in-app purchase through the app store but going through ec fit strength would be amazing because i don't have to pay apple evidently so there we go on that erica uh we definitely want to make sure if you need help uh to do a one-on-one -on -one. Okay. Is there a specific order to do the on demand? Michelle, I might have answered that, but double check. Um, do the getting started collection, build one collection, build two collection, like how I've listed them is really the best way to go through the journey. What happens is, is if you start feeling like you want to get moving quicker, shoot me an email and I'll recommend probably a program. Um, and as I start adding more, uh, I've got a lot in the queue to do as new releases. And I'm going to do new releases every two weeks because I don't want to overwhelm you. My new hashtag with the on demand is this ain't Beachbody. So Beachbody, the app, uh, they tell us straight away. They're like, oh, we have 3,000 workouts. And I don't want to have 3,000 workouts. If I do, they're going to be one, two, three, four. Like they're going to go in order because the beauty of the, the philosophy that I have is the progressive and the gradual progressive nature of adding load to your brain and to your tissue. Okay. So I've never been a speedy runner and with consistency, I'm seeing my pace drop, drop a bit. I'm trying to keep my ego out of it, but can you talk about how strength contributes to speed? Okay. Here's kind of what happens. You are given a neurological speed that you have, that your brain goes. That's how fast everything goes. Your brain, if you've read the works of uh, Tim Noakes, you'll understand that that is, the, uh, that is the central governor. Your brain will only let you go as fast as you can stabilize. So when your foot hits the ground, your whole body has to be able to land without a bunch of this. And if you can't stabilize it, your brain's not going to let you put your foot into the ground as hard. So probably the best uh, journey that I have had that, that really had an outcome was with Flora Duffy. Um, she, she's just the best in the world at, at ITU. And when I was working with Flora, um, we really focused on her getting faster so that when she got off the bike, Gwen Jorgensen wouldn't in fact pass her always on the run. So we worked a tremendous amount of uh, bilateral strength. And then as she got very, very good there, we started working on single leg strength. And then we started working on um, power and plyometrics. So Britt, I'm not sure of your age and you don't have to throw it at me now, but the most important thing is figuring out the dosage to make sure that you are in fact polarizing your training so that your easy days are really easy and that your hard days are really hard. 
And if you can't achieve the kind of speed that you think you're capable of, then usually my guess is that you're training here in the middle. And we call that kind of the dead zone. Some people call it junk miles. I don't know what I call it, but I know it doesn't work. So if you want to get faster, you have to be strong to be able to handle the intervals that your coach is asking uh, you to, to do. And when Siri Lindley was my coach, Siri would have me do 20 second really fast turnover, leg turnover. And sometimes she'd give me stuff so fast I almost fell off the treadmill. But I never got injured because she was really good at just dosing the 15 or the 20 seconders. And I would have to do 20 by 20 seconds with lots of recovery just to get the brain and the neural stimulation to get going faster. Um, you should, yeah, it's, it's more of a, we use a treadmill for speed work. Um, but you need to be strong to be able to handle that kind of work. So I think if you just stay in the program, because I know you've been really consistent, um, we, could pr we need you to have your coach throw you on the treadmill a little bit um, to be able to get faster. And it's your brain. We lose it as we get older. We lose that fast twitch. So we want you to be doing that. Uh, Carla, different passwords, different apps. Separate registrations and separate accounts. Yes. Um, the Easy Fit Boulder app is free when you download it. Um, so is on demand, but if you want access to on demand, it's 20 bucks a month. So I'm happy to help you with that. Viper workouts. Viper, Sheila Finley, how are the Viper workouts classified, launch or lift? Right now, because we're just learning to use the Viper, I just launched the first Viper collection. Um, that is just Viper right now. They, because all we have, you have the heavier Viper, which I'm excited to be adding in later. Um, but right now, everything is lighter load because we're using the 4K. And we really haven't started moving that guy with a bunch of speed. So I would classify them very much as just kind of intro to Viper. And, and just know that that, uh, that journey is gonna keep going because I love that tool. As a triathlete, I'm having pain on my hip only while I'm running. I'm pretty sure it was overload training, stopped my workouts. What do you recommend? Uh, pain is never good. So let me just deal with this from a, a perspective of pain. Um, whenever you have pain, we need to pull you back to figure out what's happening. And I, uh, Tijuan, I think is your name, email me, because what I'd like to do more than anything is I, I need to ask more questions about hip pain. I will tell you that you become compressed from running and we need to unload you and decompress you. So there's, there's going to be more questions, but I really want you to connect with me on ec33fit at me.com. Okay, so email me. I'm happy to help. I'd like to buy some kettlebells, guidance on how to determine what weights to start with. Um, Lori, the biggest, most important thing is to recognize that the number three kettlebell needs to be heavy. So I would recommend that your number three kettlebell be between 25 and 30 pounds. And I'm just gonna guess, I don't know your age, I don't know how strong you are, but I know if you're an athlete who likes to run, swim and bike or hike, and you're a female, you need to be able to do the kind of work that we did yesterday in the strength work. And I've been using the 30 pound dumbbell and I could probably start going up to 35 for my heavy one. So the, ha the number two kettlebell then would be half of that. And the number one kettlebell would be half of that. So start your, start your journey from the top down. Number three should be probably between 25 and 35. Number two should be somewhere between 12 and a half and 17 and a half pounds. And then uh, the last one should be a little bit lighter than that. Um, will live classes be on Facebook page or on an EC fit? The Facebook. Okay. Kirsten, every Monday, Facebook live, always, unless I'm out of town and, um, and even then I want to do it. So, the Facebook page, if you guys are here on the call, make sure you're on the, the private group, EC Fit members. 
Um, I just have to approve you to get in, but uh, just say, hey, I want to be in the group and come in the group. And I'm always going to do that Monday workout. That's always going to be free. You don't have to do programs. You have to do on demand, nothing. That's always going to be um, something I'm going to do. So Monday mornings, Facebook. Thursdays will always be Zoom. And I'll kind of announce what we're going to do. We're right now, we're in a strength phase on Thursdays. These are sneak peek workouts. They are being filmed for future launch on on demand. So when you come on Thursdays, if you are an on demand customer, those classes starting in July, those are going to be free for you. If you're not an on demand customer, those Thursday workouts are 10 bucks. And I kind of did a little homework on that. And people seem to think that that was fair and that felt okay. So if you don't want to be an on demand customer, absolutely no problem. You can still jump in on some of those Thursday workouts and register for 10 bucks. Everybody else, um, we're just going to make those, those free. And then I'm going to have those available for 72 hours. So they will be on Zoom via the link for 72 hours. I will be able to give you them, um, but I have to transition them off of Zoom and onto YouTube because that's a great place to store video. So just so you know, that hopefully makes sense. Uh, Hein, uh, Susan can tell me exactly what we need. So we'll take care of you uh, personally. Don't worry about that. Uh, Speaking of right line balance, Reiko, great point. Uh, right, left balance, speed off the ground. We all have a plant leg and a speed leg. Some people who have never played soccer or tennis or anything like that, sometimes you're just like boom, 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 and you're nice and balanced. But for the most part, it's not abnormal to have a fast leg and a slow leg. Um, and just keep doing the single leg work because finding balance is always a really, really good idea. The board with the hole for the big toe. <laughs> Carla, that's called the mobile board. And so a fun part of the on-demand app is the expert series. I have a lot of really smart friends. Um, I'm probably never going to do an, a podcast uh, that I would do. I've, I've been on podcasts, but... Um, my version of that podcast is my expert series. And I had Jay Deshari, who wrote a fabulous book called um, Anatomy for Runners. I love Jay because he doesn't think that just because something hurts, you should rest it. I love his philosophy on, on uh, helping people and teaching people. Um, he kind of likes the work I do, so we have a little, little bit of, of fun together. But the mobile board you can get at mobileboard.com and you can get that and you can get that um, uh, on at mobileboard.com and you can use my uh, code ECFIT10 at uh, checkout and that'll save you a little bit of money. Okay, so I like to like to save people money if I can. So mobileboard.com ECFIT10 get one, we'll be, we'll be using them. The reason they're cool is because a big part of your power is in your big toe and your ability to load into that medial spiral line. And that's a fascial line of, of that quickness and that allows you to be stable every single time you have a landing. If you're, if you're landing on your pinky toe and you can't roll down into your big toe, um, you're not going to load your adductors, you're not going to load your BMO, and you definitely need that as a safety tool for staying healthy as an athlete and running. Okay, first time Ironman training. Yay! Oof, we want to race. Um, you know, right now, it's funny about the pools. Um, during COVID, it's really been interesting. Uh, to see people freak out about swimming. The nice thing is the entire planet couldn't swim. And I own a health club. We've got three pools um, through the entire shutdown. I, I didn't swim once, which I don't know why. Everybody else wanted to swim. I guess I was just kind of working it out. Um, I think a lot of people shredded their shoulders using bands during that period. Um, feeling the water, nothing 
can really uh, duplicate that. I believe in keeping the chest really open, having a really healthy, strong shoulder. So we do a lot of rowing in my workouts, uh, single arm rows, double arm rows, to just keep facilitating great posture. Um, the foundation training also really, really helps. But Kimberly, the bottom line, as you continue your training, and now we're all starting to gently get back in the water, um, it's probably going to take you three or four swims to just get the feel of the water. But the feedback that I've been getting from everyone in Boulder is it really just took them three or four swims and now they're starting to feel fine again. So I would just stay relaxed um, and just feel the water. And remember this little hashtag, strong is smooth and smooth is fast. Three weeks out from your race. So end of September, you should start feeling like you're gonna train faster, but just be smooth and strong through the next few weeks. And I think you'll feel, start feeling better in the water. Okay, the times for the Monday and Thursday workouts. Bottom line is both of them are available all the time because they're all on demand. If you get on the uh, Facebook page, you can find the Monday morning workout, but we do it live, uh, Colorado time, 645 on Monday mornings. Usually it'll give you a, hopefully a little bit of time for like a 20 or 30 minute run. And then we do a launch session. So that's the Monday mornings. Thursdays right now, 10 o'clock uh, Colorado time. Okay, let's look over here on the chat box. The balance boards, um, Trace, yeah, you'll be good with, with any other balance board. Um, you know, I know you. You need to just keep focusing on unloading into that big toe. You're a super strong athlete, um, but just make sure you're loading into your big toe. And remember, if you have the balance board that just goes like this, remember, you can turn it cattywampus so that it, it does uh, a little bit of pronation and, and even working supination will work through your ankle mobility in a really nice way. Carla, I'm stoked that you're already feeling that in your cycling because uh, when you can load into your big toe in cycling, it's going to dive your knee into close to that top tube, and that's a very powerful position. Yay, rowing, <laughs> right? Uh, let's see. For Viper, I know you had mentioned having two, the four or six, and then a heavier one. How heavy should we go for the heavier one if we're a woman and not super muscular? I would say a 10 or a 12. K Viper uh, is all you'll ever need. I think Sheila mentioned she had a 10 K Viper. Um, so I'm pretty strong and I think I don't, I mean, unless I'm flipping it or something, uh, my heavy, the heaviest I'm gonna go is probably a 10 or a 12 K. So if you're on the stronger end, go for a 12 K Viper for your heavier. If you're, if you're comfortable strong, go for a 10 K. It's true. You're going to have to learn to throw that thing around. So Sheila's like the new 10K are really big in circumference. So they are, they're like this big. But part of that is it's, it's a good, it's a good design. It actually will challenge you to move your body in a whole different way. And I think that that is um, just a good time to kind of go into this wrap up and this thought process. If we're really thinking about why we race, and why we love sport. The bottom line is, it's freaking fun. And competing and knowing people that are in your, your age group and building relationships and having measurement tools is, is just a blast. And so the biggest thing for me, and hopefully what I can uh, you know, impose upon you in a, in a really positive way is that we have this journey of life and, and, and it's gonna move, you know, time flies and it's kind of a drag. But at the same time, what we do with our time and how we live and how we feel every single day, strength training, 
lifting heavy stuff, like Stacy Sims likes to say, LHS, lift heavy shit, um, facilitates a hormonal response, um, a cardiovascular response, a tissue response. All of these things that are coming at us in time and life that we want to be able to live the best life we possibly can. So strength is everything. Posture is everything. Um, how you stand, how you smile, how you feel, your moods are impacted by, uh, by your hormonal response uh, and aging and stuff like that. So my goal is that you're just all badasses for as many years as you possibly can be. And I just, uh, I love being part of that journey with you. So, hey, thanks, Andrea. This is great. There's the mobile board over there on the uh, chat line. So I, I'm glad to know you. I'm glad to have you as friends. Um, hopefully this has been a good session for you to get some questions answered. Remember, there's two apps. They will work together really well. The heavy stuff is going to come in the programs, the black app, okay? The, the more fitness, like we're going to build your tissue resiliency, we're going to work on your movement, we're going to be able to coach you and stuff like that. That's going to happen on, on demand. Um, but the heavy stuff is going to be really important. And you're going to see me really hammering that, whether it's in a, the MailChimp uh, Communications Weekly I'm going to start doing some blogging. Hey, let me ask you this. Do you guys think it'd be a good idea to do a blog or a vlog? And just give me some feedback because I've got to start to just educate a little bit more. Blog better than blog. Blog, blog. <laughs> I know, Eric, I wish they lived here. Yeah, I think I might have to do both. There's software now that if you do a blog, you can actually, or a vlog, you can actually get it downloaded as well. Yeah. The podcasts are always fun, but there's so many good podcasts out there. I, you guys don't need to listen to me all the time. Just, if you just Google Aaron Carson podcast, good God, it's the same. I am pretty consistent in my thought process. So um, anytime you're going to, be listening to me, you're probably going to hear the same stuff. <laughs> so anyway, we're getting older, we're getting wiser. Um, we're going to do it together. And, and I just hope that you're feeling good. You can always email me if you have questions. And I just want to say thank you. I'm filled with gratitude that we're moving on this direction. If you have friends that you think might enjoy our journey, just jump in and, and invite them along. Okay. And uh, yeah. Have a great day, everybody. Happy Friday. Hopefully you get out and have some fun this weekend. My pleasure. Cheers. <laughs>